last. We have it now. A robot to kill Godzilla. Hey guys, PsychoG94 here, and if you couldn't tell by the intro, welcome to my figure review of the SH Monster Arts Mechagodzilla 2, or Mechagodzilla. Now, even though the release date on the bottom left says 2011, I got this guy a couple weeks ago. I don't like doing reviews a lot, but you know, well, the thing, I don't hate doing reviews, but I'm not a huge fan of them because they take a lot of work to do, at least for mine, and they don't look super good either. But also, I'm just proud of the intro I made. I mean, that's awesome. I, lo I love. If a little background on me, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 from the Heisei era is my f all time favorite Godzilla movie, and that's my favorite Mechagodzilla. I would I could watch Mechagodzilla or Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 every day if I had to. But we're not watching a movie right now, we're doing a figure review. So, with all my other figures, let's first take a look at the box. So here's the box. This is the front of the box. Standard SH Monster 2011 Mecha Godzilla. First release with beam effect. Mecha Godzilla. Picture of Mecha Godzilla 2. Mecha Godzilla SH Monster Arts. Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla in shiny metal. SH Monster Arts. The back. From a picture of Mechagodzilla, the awesome movie poster where he looks cooler than that poster than he actually does, because I got him and he looks kind of bland. SH Monster Arts. The nice thing that they did with the 2011 type boxes, like with Space Godzilla's a little super shiny Mechagodzilla. The cool vents and stuff. And yeah, just like with every other box, gotta compare sizes. So here is a size comparison. I'm doing this a bit differently with the Godzilla birth version box. As you can see, these guys are right next to each other. Each other. Whoa, it's bad speech. Now the Mecha Godzilla box is more of a tall type box in long ways because, I mean, once we see the figure, we'll know why. Yeah, my hand's in the way. Ooh. So yeah. Width-wise, is about the same. So yeah. That is Mechagodzilla's box. Now, let's get on to the detail. The Oh no, let's get on to the accessories, then the detail, articulation, and size comparison. So here are the accessories. He comes with a green mountain base, his Mega Buster, an arm, a Tamashi arm, alternate figure, figures, alternate figures, alternate hands, the port for the plasma grenade, and an alternate tail. Now, let's take a look at the fingers first. See if we can get zoom in on that better. Apparently not, because, you know, there you go, I guess. So, they're literally, they kind of remind me of the missile fingers that um, the original Mechagodzilla had. That's what I like to use them as, even though he never had used finger missiles, I like to make these like his finger missile hands if I ever do use these. Plug in via ball joint. And there goes the tail. This one I gotta say is my most disappointing accessory. Would've been cool if they made that clear. Also, you can see on the metal that there's like sparkles in it. I don't know what it's called, but back is just plain plastic. There's the alternate tail. This alternate tail I'll get to later when I go into his transformation. The mountain base is literally just a green hill. Nothing special about it. I don't know why they chose this, but you know, everyone's seen the arm before. Now the beam. But everyone loves to see really cool believe it or not even though they look different let me pull over this beam 
Godzilla and Mechagodzilla's beams, they feel pretty much exactly the same. I mean, they both have the little lines everywhere. And also, they don't really, they kind of work, because if you remember in the movie, if you've seen the movie, let me put this back. In the movie, when the beams hit, Mechagodzilla's beam is stronger originally. So, it's kind of like, he's trying to push back this beam, but it just spreads out and this beam is going forward. I don't know, beams. Now, to set this up, you pretty much know what you'd have to do. I mean, I've done this like three times now. And this is the wrong end. Yeah, three times. Plug that there. The little hole. Now my hand is shaking, my gosh. Plug the little hole, if I can find it, there it is. Right there, boom. Got your beam, I have to hold it upside down because I have my things positioned weirdly. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, this is, now let me set this up with Mechagodzilla. Now believe it or not, this is how you're supposed to have Mechagodzilla's beam. It's not supposed to go in his mouth. Now. If you are a dummy, like my pre the previous owner of this, because I did get this used. Believe it or not, it was really far away. And break off the two front teeth on this guy. Then, you can go and put the beam in, like literally. Fits right in there perfectly. And you can set it in there if you want. No repercussions will happen. If you break off the teeth, but... Again, it's supposed to be like this. Oh, also, me being a dummy, totally forgot about his alternate neck accessory. Speaking of accessories, these are all made for him to go into flight mode, so let's quickly turn him into flight mode, and this is really wobbly, I apologize. So on this, I might sound a little bit farther away, that's because I am, and we're gonna be swapping out his thing in the flight mode. Now I hate doing this, because you wanna know what this requires you to do? Pop open your figure. See that ball joint? You don't want to break that. Also, this is die cast. Like, that's awesome. Now, first thing I want to show you how to do is put in the little Mega Buster. Or well, not Mega Buster, Plasma Grenade. You kind of pivot this down. See? And you just pull it out. Then you plop this thing back in. Boom. No, I'm not going to reattach it yet, but there he is with his Mega Buster. Why do I keep saying Mega Buster? His, um, crap, I keep forgetting the Plasma Grenade, oh my gosh. Now, to continue getting him into flight mode, first let's attach the tail. On this, you literally just pull up. Or down, you pull down, don't pull up, you pull down. Because it's a clip. Now, this is what I was talking about the tails. They're literally exactly the same, except one's, this one's a bit more straight. Then you take the straighter tail, plug it right on. See, there's no curve when he's standing now. As for the hands, my least favorite, well, actually, this is my second least favorite part. Hands, just gently twist and pull. Look at that tiny ball joint. I'm only going to do one hand because I don't see the point in doing both. Oh my gosh, that is a struggle to put on. Yeah, basically you put this, this off camera because I have to use a little bit of force. There we go. Yeah, see? There's a little bit of force, shaky, I know. See, doesn't this look like he'd be using finger missiles? Look at that. Now my least favorite part of the entire figure. The neck. Where is it? Pop off the head. This is what I hate. There it goes. It, I kind of flung it off by accident. Uh, wobbly, I know. That's because I'm leaning on a chair. Or a desk, my bad. Here's the neck. Alternate neck right here. Now, I have a problem if I plug my nail, I won't be able to get it out. Because I almost broke this. But, again, sorry for wobbly. Plug that in right there. Then, you plug that in like that. And this is what he'd look like in flying form. 
all attached, he'd look like... So I'm not going to attach it because I hate putting him in flying form. He'd look like this. All in all. So yeah, that's what he'd look like in flying form. Now I hate putting him in flying form. I really do because you have to break apart your figure to do it. I just keep him in the standard standard mode because you know I don't like breaking apart my figures because I mean imagine pulling this apart you break the ball joint you're screwed so put everything back exactly the same way as you would think uh, except there we go yep, everything is exactly how you'd imagine Oh, yeah, so, boom, there you go. I'm going to leave him with the little finger missiles because I just think that's cool. Now, let's get on to the detail. Or the detail on the figure is pretty amazing. The eyes have that nice orange, like, hexagonal pattern. The entire body is a really shiny silver with, like, sparkled tinted in it. The mouth, again, idiot broke off my teeth. See little ports back there. All the detail on him. Same as back here. Nothing there. Just complete silver. Same with that. All the detail on the bottom of the feet. Um. Yeah, he's basically all one color. Color. Wow. You can see. Um. What's it called? Some hints of gunmail. Oh, gunmail. Oh my gosh, I cannot speak today. Gunmetal. On him. Oh, speaking of metal. Diecast parts everywhere. These elbow joints, diecast. This is diecast. Diecast. This black part right here, diecast. This entire feet section from these little ankle guards, diecast. Basically, anything black on him like this is diecast, except for the hands. So, diecast, diecast. In the knees, the metal part, die cast. He's a really. Wish I could make it. You can hear it better. Like. He's really metal. <laughs> He's really metal. But yeah, the details look great on him. So, that's it for detail. Let's move on to articulation. Now, for articulation, it isn't terrible, but it's not good. So, head. Rotate 360. Pretty much no up and down movement. It's a little bit of left to right, but it's like a spring. Jaw, open, close. This is when I'm gonna need two hands, so I gotta like stand up because I'm kinda leaning. Oh, here comes the wobbly again. Arms. The ball joint can shift all around. See? And it can also shift out and inward, which is cool because it's got a little hinge combo in there. The arms, bend forward, backward, no side to side at all. But that's what this joint's for, so if you want to get on the side to side, you have to go like that. But his elbow has no swivel. His hands, ball joint, with a weird joint right here that can move anything on this side. See how this won't go up and down? Still won't go up and down, it only lets you go side to side. Oh my gosh, I hate articulation. <laughs> I was thinking of doing stop animation, but no, that's horrible. Ball joint right here. It's a nice pivot like crazy. Go back about that far, up, down about. Nice ab crunch. Get the little classic Mechagodzilla look. Legs. Nice joint right here. Big old ball joint. Same with the knee. No swivel, just straight up hinge. Right here, there's a nice ankle pivot. Foot up and down. Nothing, no swivel. Again. Tail has no articulation. And that's all for the articulation on this guy. So it's a little lackluster, I have to admit. But if you watch the movie... Okay, he looks about with his mouth closed. If you watch the movie... He didn't have a lot of articulation in it. Like, he really only did some up and down arm movements. Barely walked. Well, he walked. Most of the time, he flew. 
Um, one thing I forgot to notice on here, if you eventually buy the Garuda pack, boom, just pop this off. So if you want, you can have Mecha Godzilla without the Godzilla. Like, main sails. Boom. That's the articulation on this guy. Now to size comparisons. The Trendmaster Space Godzilla, again, way out of scale. My, for some odd reason, leaning to the left, GMK Fan Creation Godzilla 2000, which is somewhat in scale. The SH Monstrarts Mecha King Ghidorah, his predecessor, which doesn't all fit on camera. And my SH Monstrarts Godzilla 1995 birth version, who for some odd reason, has like a hunchback problem. But still, this is probably the thing you're going to use most. Very good size comparison, nonetheless. So in the end, Super Mecha Godzilla. Alright, no, no, not Super Mecha Godzilla. I don't have the Garuda. Mecha Godzilla 2. Detail, great. Looks just like the suit. Articulation, not for what it is and for what the figure represents. It's very good for a Mecha Godzilla 2. I mean... Some things I would have liked, for example, an elbow swivel, the ability to look up, but then again, in the movie, he never did that. The accessories, pretty good. I would have preferred a... The problem with the beam is, if you look, you'll, you can only have him firing down, basically, at someone's crotch. Which pretty much sucks, but it would have been cool to have, like, a... Uh, uh, what's it called? Plasma grenade for the port, so two beam effects would have been cool, but I'm um, fine with just the one. And I hate turning him into flying mode, though. That, they should have done something else. And overall, sizing is pretty good. And final verdict is this really is the ultimate weapon to kill Godzilla. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.